In my last dining room table video, I alluded to my first commission job and asked if anyone could guess what I was building. Nobody got it, which isn't terribly surprising because I'm building railroad smashboard blades, which none of you have probably heard of. But they used to attach to railroad semaphores and signal trains when tracks were not supposed to be accessed and smashed and make noise to uh, alert the conductor. Uh, I'm working off this drawing from 1927 to recreate these, so it was really kind of a cool historical restoration project. My first step is laying out a template that I'm going to use to make these. Uh, it's a lot of, of routing in, in this project, um, and, and I actually ended up running into some issues with the drawing that uh, I'm going to describe here in a second. So I have taken my first pass at laying out the slots on the circular part of the blade and have run into a couple issues with this drawing. Um, I don't think, in fact I know that it is not possible to both make it look exactly like this picture and also exactly honor all these dimensions that are shown. So for example, uh, we have instructions that the length of the openings are to be fixed by circumscribed circle 21 inches in diameter so that is this circle right here however if we let that fix the length of the openings we will be one and a quarter inches from the outside we have a 5 16 chamfer it's going to go to right here and also a one and a quarter inch uh, metal brace uh, that uh, is meant to stabilize the paddle that will overlap entirely that chamfer and that would just look funny. The way it's drawn here we have the chamfer and with a very small gap between it and, and the metal so, so what I'm, the way I'm going to interpret this instruction I'm going to have the chamfer be set by the uh, circumscribed 21 inch circle. However that causes some issues for the slots at the far left and right because here is the edge of the actual slot itself with the two inch spacing that's called out in the, in the drawing. Here's my 21 inch circumscribed circle. That chamfer is going to be outsided. It would shrink down to nothing at all if I tried to fix the edge of the chamfer um, on the circle to set the length. So I'm going to just have to eyeball it um, there, there's no metal brace to overlap here, so it's not as much of an issue. Um, I'm going to knock this, they, they specify a one inch chamfer, I'm going to knock that down to three quarters uh, to, to not crowd this out so much. Um, and probably also recommend that this brace be inch and an eighth, even though that's going to be completed by the customer once I'm finished. Um, so at the end of the day it's going to be very close and, and probably the best compromise between the visual aesthetic look of this drawing and the dimensions that it calls out uh, and, and I think that's the, the best way to proceed. So if you're still watching after that thrilling description you can actually see me build something. Uh, just finishing up the final layouts and and um, marking the, the taper down from the from the head of the paddle to to its length and uh, and now I'm putting some stop blocks on that that I'll use to make the the circular cut with the router so I get a nice perfect circle on, on the head of the smash board. Only cut about halfway. And I cut the waste out with a bandsaw and use a pattern bit to to clean it up. Now I'm setting up my router circle jig to cut an outside arc to neck the head of the smash board down to its length. I'm 
taken the opportunity to show you a feature I really like on my my router table that's in the wing of my saw. You see how I have that wrench uh, positioned so that it's gripped by the by the uh, angle iron on the side of the, the saw uh, that holds it in place. I also have the, the dust collection set up so that I can adjust the height of that router uh, and the, the dust is all pulled to the side not through the brushes of the motor. It's a really nice little setup easy to adjust height, no cabinet to collect dust. I've, I've really liked using that uh, router table setup. It's real cheap. And I've got this a bit out of order uh, because I, I tried to sand this curve. It didn't really work out. I've already got the slats cut. I'm going to show you how I did that in a second. Um, I had to go back and, and use another outside arc to get a real nice smooth profile. So what I'm doing here is building the template that I use to modify the primary template and, and put those uh, the, the slats in the, uh, in the template for the smash board. This is what allows the air to go through and, and decreases the, the wind resistance on that smash board. step routing process gives me a nice and precise half inch uh, slat that I can then put onto the template. This is a different size obviously. I made, made different sizes for each one. Drill out and then route the slats in the primary template. Lots of routing in this project because obviously I get to do it all again on this match board myself. So I was lucky enough to find 5 8 inch ash stock, uh, which was perfect because the specs on the drawing called for half inch to be the final thickness, so I really didn't waste very much material at all. And I just cut it to rough length with the uh, silver saw. To get a straight edge, I decided to try something a little different and use a construction chalk line and the bandsaw since it was pretty far uh, from, from being straight and I didn't want to mess around with the joint. This just seemed to be an easy way to go. That was straight enough to put up against this fence of a, of a table saw to get a perfectly straight edge and, and now I mill it up. I probably have that out of it. It worked out. I made some some clamping calls uh, for for this glue up. Now, the thing that really frustrates me about clamping calls is, is that once you have them in, in place and you try to use a clamp, the first clamp is is always trying to fall off or or pinch the calls too much. It it, it just never has has been a really easy thing to work with. So I tried to come up with something to hold the first clamp in place, or in, in this case, actually just a big piece of all thread. Uh, and this really worked well. Um, I'm, I'm, if I ever do a tabletop or something, I'll, I'll do a similar set of, of clamping calls. So, so in order to make the clamps for it, I, I take a length of all thread uh, and, and heat up a section of it and bend it, bend it into uh, 90 degrees. And then that that bent piece will fit into the bottom clamping call, and I can just tighten it with the bolt on the top. As usual, my verbal description probably not very good, but it makes sense when you see it. So you see those holes at the bottom. The lower calls receives that bent piece of, of all thread, and then I just tighten down the top. I also uh, raise the outfeed table of my joiner just slightly so that the calls have a slightly con let's see convex shape um, and and that really seemed to work well and, and uh, make sure that you keep even pressure along the whole length of those calls 
since they have a little bit of a belly in them that meets in the middle. And you can see them lifting up a little bit as I tighten down the first one. So there's the clamp up. And now it's time to use that template. So I trace out all the slats in the outside profile. And rough cut the outside with the saber saw. save strain on the router bit, I removed the majority of the material for the slats in a similar fashion by drilling out and then using the, the saw to, to cut out the majority of the material. And now I attach the template with double stick tape. In order to do these sides, I use an aluminum straight edge. The subsequent smashboard blades, I, I just simply use the first one. Uh, it's got a little bit of a profile that's squared off at the edge that I, that I work with uh, hand tools. Well, not all hand tools. Come on now. I finally get to use this itty bitty little plane that I paid way too much for. And my little drill jig that was brought to my attention by the drug worker. Very nice. And 60 degree chamfers on every single one of those slats. Lots of routing. Especially considering that I had to make several passes because I wasn't comfortable hugging the material out on on uh, one pass. I was very happy to have my router and the wing of my table saw it really made this a lot easier because as you can see the length of that paddle is, is uh, supported by the table saw. The chamfer on the sides is 80 degrees so I needed another router bit for this. I had to special order this thing from Australia, but it really did a nice job. I considered trying to do this by hand, but I figured it was better to buy the right router bit. And that's it. Finished up. It was an interesting project. I'm glad I, I took it on. And uh, I hope the client gets a lot of enjoyment from 
this recreation of, of uh, something lost to time. So I hope you enjoyed as well. Thanks for watching.